Welcome to your February Peer Into the Night. Just like last month, we're going to take the opportunity to explore some other areas outside of our usual location. And tonight we'll be featuring a dive that happened out at Point Rustin in Tacoma. Our volunteer divers took a camera underwater and filmed their dive. And Rachel and myself, Stina, will be narrating the things they encountered along the way. So uh, sit back, relax, feel free to let us know where you're tuning in from in the comments uh, and ask any questions as we dive right in. So when our divers first gave us the footage, they warned us that the beginning might be a little rough because as they swam out to the end of the ferry out at Point Rustin, uh, you can see that the water is very murky in these first couple feet. Um, you really can't see the divers that are in front of the camera, only their lights. But luckily, as, as they descended, we start to clear up with the visibility and actually get to see some pretty cool things like... Ooh, a fish! Uh, Looks like maybe a herring. Oh, he doesn't look so hot though. Like maybe he's been chopped. <laughs> a freshly chopped herring. Nice find. <laughs> uh, here's some nice kelp crabs. <laughs> kind of. Wow, that's a big male. You can see those huge big Popeye-like pinchers um, and notice the cutting pinchers rather than the crushing pinchers like some of the other crabs that we see. There is another one tucked up in there too with the bright red underbellies. Yeah, and they have those nice long spindly legs which give them kind of their other common name, the spider crab. I know we'll see a lot of those tonight as we go along. Here's what's, a third one. Yeah, what's interesting in the um, summertime, they're mostly herbivores feeding on kelp primarily, but um, in the wintertime when the kelp dies back, they take on more of an omnivore status and they'll scavenge and they'll um, eat other things as well. Here's a nice mottled star. Uh, you can tell by the long spindly legs and the smaller central disc. Also next to this beautiful Turkish towel. A nice red algae here. Yeah, it almost glows blue. So pretty. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is such a great find. Look at this fish. Nice little painted greenling. Uh, blends in pretty well, despite it's really gorgeous coloration. Yeah, on like a sandy bottom that would stand out like a sore thumb, but in this rocky reef it's really quite quite well camouflaged. Something kind of cool I read about this fish is that they're similar to clownfish in that they'll often hide in the stinging tentacles of a fish-eating anemone to stay safe from hungry predators. I'm noticing all this red filamentous algae. Yeah, lots of Lots of different Lots species. It's very of colorful red algae. down there. It's kind of like all this riprap that is part of that construction along Rustin Way. Oh, shrimp. Yeah, these are some nice coon striped shrimp. They kind of have those really thin red lines across their bodies, striped legs, long antennas. And they're pretty big. I mean, that's yeah. what, maybe four inches? Yeah. Chompable. Yeah, chompable. They are an edible species, I know people. Oh. Oh, look at this. Some cute little squat lobster. Oh, you're darling. It's very threatening, though, with those. <laughs> they don't look very pinchy pinchers, but... <laughs> but I, I imagine that would give you uh, quite the quite the crush. What a cool find. Weird little animals, but very adorable. Oh, I see it. There was a cucumber over there. Hopefully we'll go back to those. This is really fun for me because I'm not a scuba diver. Oh, so we're at, what, 25 feet? Nice. Um, so I, I've never gone 25 feet down below. Yeah, whereas I've been a diver since 2002. Wow. It's been quite a while and get to hang out with the striped sea perch. Uh, these ones were a little tricky for us to identify at first because <laughs> they're um, a younger, they're smaller than yeah, when they they're not are. when they're not so mature, that's hard like, to see. Are you a kelp perch? Nope. You are a striped perch. Gosh, that's a gorgeous ochre star there. I love the ochre stars because you can see the little star-shaped pattern of their skeleton on the top of their, in the center of their uh, backs there. Gorgeous color on that one. Yeah, oh, and a little nice and shrimp hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> shrimp tickling the sea star's armpit there. And 
see there's a lot of plankton in the water. Um, I think part of the murkiness at the top was the recent rain. But here's a filter feeder that will oh, take yeah. advantage of some of that plankton. This is a shiny red tunicate here. And yeah, I've seen these intertidally before and they're they're really st very shiny. When the tide goes out they close up but here you can nicely see those two holes. One pulling water in and one squirting water out and taking out the plankton. So cool. Oh, there's a little gunnel. Um, hiding so in tiny. The algae, but you can't see it anymore. <laughs> it's probably hard to get the camera <laughs> quite looking in those tiny little cracks where you get the light and the lens in the right spot. But Yeah, I imagine it must be there. hard to kind of control your buoyancy and hold still while you're in the water. Like, it's easy to swim along, but holding still and pausing and kind of balancing in one spot. Yeah, and communicating. You see the, oh, yeah. the buddies are giving the okay circle with their flashlights there because this is definitely a night dive. Um, those lights definitely help the divers communicate because they obviously can't talk underwater. So, And it's hard to see hand signals, so they use light signals instead. Nice. So here's some more coon striped shrimp. You can see the striping on that big one there. Yeah. Is. You can also see there's maybe a little bit of current here, uh, just the way. Yeah, it does. It does look <laughs> we're like we're having a little outer space. Little, what is that? Warp, Warp speed. speed. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Almost looks like it's snowing and you're driving on the highway. I was hoping that was going to be an octopus, but uh, no. here's another mottled star for you. Uh, oh, and it that's looks a pretty healthy one. Like it has a little hitchhiker. Oh, yeah. Some scale worms. I actually see two scale worms on this star. Uh, one there and one on the far arm. This is like, uh, it'll hang out in the sea star's armpit and get a free meal. Um, I think nice. a commensal relationship. It's not really hurting the sea star for it to be there. No, but the sea star definitely tolerates them because they have a means of, you know, removing any little plankton or like larva that tries to settle on them. Um, they have these little tiny secret pinchers that come out called pedicellaria um, and attack anything and they leave the worms alone so they might have some benefit or the worms you know just trick the sea stars into not getting rid of them either way there's definitely a relationship there i imagine night diving must be hard to keep your bearings of where you are because um, you can't really see landmarks or anything. Yeah, there's another coonstripe shrimp. I know for this site, um, at least uh, kind of the geographic nature, there's this nice slope. So by swimming out to the point, you kind of help get yourself oriented. And you're like, okay, we're going to swim out one way with the slope to the, our left, and we're going to turn around, and the slope will go up to our right. That makes sense. <laughs> um, for a location so. like that, that... That does make sense. Oh, the algae is so pretty in the, like, just in the current there. Almost said in the breeze. In the but breeze. It's, it's not quite the breeze <laughs> we underwater. Are, we are underwater. Oh, this is a cool find. This is a clutch oh of sculpin goodness. eggs. Look at those colors. And I do like sculpin are pretty cool because the eggs, depending on how mature they are, change color. So we can see there's a couple different age eggs Green and purple clutch. and... Yeah. I know they're often uh, communal breeders where they'll lay eggs, you know, together. The females will kind of clone together. And so when we keep them in aquariums, we have to make sure that we have two females um, so they can at least lay their eggs. Oh, evidence of humans. A nice oh, a rainier beer bottle. <laughs> That's a little I wonder, fitting. <laughs> this is actually great habitat for octopus, which yeah. unfortunately I didn't spot any no. little eight-armed buddy in there. But at least if if we're gonna see trash a, a glass bottle is probably about the best trash there is Definitely. because glass is inert it's not gonna break down like plastic does um, it's not gonna rust or release heavy metals or anything like that if anything it'll just become some more sand this is a nice little plumose anemone that bright white blob <laughs> yeah it that's really tiny st sticks out though <laughs> nice contrast here um, I think our buddies are telling us there's something cool 
And we're back to the fish eggs. <laughs> oh, what a good job, buddy, to, <laughs> to point that out. Okay, well, yeah. We'll look at them I some more. Them. They're they, pretty. They're pretty with the light on them. They almost look like little glass orbs. Little orbies. Let's see. What else? Like, I'm so curious. This is so fun for me to, to do this virtual scuba dive. Without having to take the class or haul all the gear. No, I'm... Or pay for all the gear. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive hobby, I've come to find out. Worth it, though, I yeah, think. Once, once you have all the gear, it's a little bit easier to get out there and go dive. But that, it does have a steep initial investment. Some interesting structure with all sorts of life on it. I see a oh, northern yeah. kelp crab Look at all the, and ooh, a there, California sea cucumber and a really fast fish. fish. <laughs> Um, yeah, all sorts of Yeah, algae. look at the size of that cucumber. That's a big one. Kind of that purple encrusting coralline algae there. So pretty. Nice, big, strong male kelp grub here. Oh, here's yeah, a... Look, you see his mouth moving? Yeah. So neat. The funky little, what we think is a bristly tunicate. Oh, yeah, that is... I've not seen one of those before. Another oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I think, is a scaly head because look at those little tufts along the sides. Oh, and Here's look at cool you. <gasps> this is such a fun this, fish. Yeah, the sailfin sea raven. Formerly um. the sailfin sculpin, but <laughs> they're, they're not in the sculpin family, technically, so they deserve a name that fits with that. But such a fun fish. I like the diver's light in the background. Pretty. Right. Yeah, interesting how that just that one little bit of I don't even know what that is, um, but some some bit of structure attracts all this life. Yeah. So the I'm gonna call it a sailfin sculpin. I'm yeah, that's okay. used to see <laughs> yet, but I like its little decorative Siri on top of its head. Uh, oh, <laughs> there it goes. But oh, now we get. Oh, now you can see that better. why they get called a sailfin. Uh, nice long protruding <laughs> fin yeah, on its head. <laughs> on its head, and it's a little yeah. Um, their scientific name is is naughty ichthys, which is literally the sailor fish, because um, it's like a sailboat. And and whatever the mast of a dorsal fin species name is refers to the dark bar across their eye. So yeah, they have a very descriptive common name, or sorry, scientific name. Yay, Latin. It's <laughs> nice when it works out that way. When Definitely. It's actually descriptive and meaningful. I know exactly what you are. Little sailfin sculpin. Who's not actually a sculpin? See, common names. See? They mess common it up. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I know that's Alan's favorite fish. So, glad to see this little buddy out here. Uh, it looks like another diver is bringing something. over... <gasps> oh my gosh, Rachel. <laughs> I have <laughs> never, ever seen one of these. Wow, this is a sea spider. Yeah. There are very few arachnids that live underwater, and this is one of them. <laughs> this is like the biggest one we have I'm around like, here. It definitely looks like a daddy long legs. I'm totally <laughs> not convinced daddy long that legs it's vibes. not one. <laughs> but okay, yeah, sea spider it is. Um, How that cool. was a great find. Uh, but it looks like Nate there. <laughs> Hank, you're missing out on the sea spider. <laughs> going to get to the surface and hear all the what, what all that commotion was about <laughs> uh, very cool oh i see a fun sculpin Moving right along oh just a little bit of old kelp hanging out there oh look at that nice calcareous tube worm oh yeah of course Ready? we're gonna poke it boop <laughs> <laughs> you nice. can't help but make that sound i know <laughs> sound effect but yeah that that is a nice Old piece of kelp. Old kelp. Oh, yeah, look, we've got a little, looks like a sharp nosed crab. They're so fun because they can decorate. Um, and they have those long pinchers, like, like the kelp crabs we saw earlier. Um, they can reach and grab things and then stick them right to their own back. Very effective camouflage because they can change it up. If they change locations, they just grab a few things from around the room and plunk them on there. 
It's a nice giant blue mouse anemone of the orange variety, the world's tallest anemone here. Yeah, in the tropics, they have very wide anemones, like carpet anemones here in the Pacific Northwest, where our anemones don't do too much photosynthesis. Uh, they can just be really tall to reach out and grab plankton from the water. I like that shot with pink in the background there to give you some perspective on just how big that anemone is. And Ooh. here's something interesting. <laughs> Poop! <laughs> Evidence of a California sea cucumber. Yeah. But I wonder if we'll the sand cleaners see. of yeah. the Salish Sea. Exactly. Yes. Oh, I see. Oh, a I hint. see one. Yep, I see one. <laughs> Will we look at it? More I closely? mean, they're not really fast, so I would imagine they they haven't traveled very far from that poop. <laughs> yes, I imagine this is the culprit. Our spiky hot dog here is indeed the California sea cucumber, uh, which eats the detritus out of the sand and. Then, so any yeah. organic materials get digested, and what's not digestible gets pooped out. So they're so, little sand vacuums. Next time you're building a sand castle, thank, <laughs> thank you, sea cucumber, for this nice, nice clean, clean sand. sand. <laughs> I don't know how clean sand that's gone through an animal is, but <laughs> fair, fair. Oh, Ooh. little fishy. Oh, this. I almost thought it was a rockfish, but the three kind of yeah three triangular dorsal fins, dorsal fins is. That's a little cod. And they get big, so that's just a little a little one, a baby. Yeah, nice. They get like o over a foot, sometimes two or three feet. I mean, because that's what, is that, that's yeah, the same that's the cod, cod that, that we eat. Cod. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh my cod. Getting some more oh, some sad looking kelp. It's uh, definitely not the growing season. There. That's a good look at a coon striped shrimp. Yeah, you can really see their little okay, bye, eyeballs. <laughs> the, um, the shrimps, I, shrimps are very nocturnal, and so their eyeballs are on stalks, um, and they kind of reflect the, the light. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but when you're there in person, at least I know from being at the beach, you can see them, and they just kind of glow red. Speaking of red, that kelp crab there is very red. Red algaes, red sea cucumbers. It's very red down there. Yeah. Looks like bricks. Not too many uh, square rocks right. out there. <laughs> oh, look at that! that wow, I love it was little, like, bumped right <laughs> into it. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a tenophore. It looks like a jelly because it's very gelatinous um, and totally see-through, but they don't have the same stinging tentacles that a jelly does. Instead, they have um, little cilia that kind of waft through the air and reflect the light, and they look oh, rainbow -y. I saw that nice little sparkle of them. Oh, that's a big barnacle there. Just the shell. When they're a volcano like that, you know there's nobody home. I love seeing the live giant barnacles though because their little trap doors are so pointy and big they stick out. Their feet when they eat are also really impressive to watch. Yeah, they're kind of, through the kind water. of pink. Pink feet. Oh, look, at, we've got two, two animals called spider crabs. Oh, and look at this, a rockfish. Our best guess is it's a brown rockfish. Yeah, you're better at identifying <laughs> them than I am, but... But sometimes the copper rockfish are more brown, but there's kind of a little <laughs> spot on its cheek that I'm like, ah, that's, you know, It's just tricky. your best guess. <laughs> They'll never know if we misidentified it, so... Yeah, so if you're a fish pro out there, let us know if you know differently. We'll, we'll gladly... Take your take, recommendations. Take corrections, <laughs> yeah. We're pretty good at this, um, but, you know... Every once in a while. There's a nice northern kelp crab on top of another. This is kind of a oh. different variation on the crab hug. You see a big male on top of a smaller female. I'm guessing she's about ready to molt. Because uh, that's when crabs are able to pass on the genes. Yeah, this um, this species is Pugetia producta. And they, they can mate all year round. Unlike a lot of the crabs that only really mate in the springtime when the big molts happen. These ones can have babies a lot, which there is maybe why we them. see a lot <laughs> yeah. of them. They're very successful there. Oh, look at that. That's a nice pretty one. Leather star here. 
Kind of got a nice little slime blanket Ooh, going on. Yum. Do you think it's from the sea start itself or somebody right? crawled over it? Yeah, it's like almost moon snail slime looking. But it does look I very mucusy. It's not really a moon snail <laughs> kind of area. No, it's pretty You need rocky. more clams and more sand for them. But, you know, I've been surprised before with <laughs> yeah. these dives, so. Totally. Kind of a view of our buddies here. There. It's impressive, really, Looking how bright around. those lights are. Yeah, the light of the day. Ooh, there's a nice, another model star, kind oh, of a yeah. different color than some of the ones we've Pretty. seen. Like brown color. Yeah. It's nice to see some healthy sea stars. Definitely. Looking really good. But I know we will have February cocktail and fish tales, third Wednesday of the month. We'll be talking about sea star wasting with Dr. Sarah Gravem. Um, one of the lead authors on getting the sunflower star listed as critically endangered. So tune in for that. Wow, look at the size of this one. That is yeah. a big anemone. And a big sea cucumber off to the left. Yeah. <laughs> getting a look oh, so into the mouth. Pretty. I think it's interesting how the tentacles around the mouth are a little bit different than the tentacles um, yeah. kind of along the perimeter edges. So fluffy. I want to poke it. <laughs> so you know we're Harbor Wild Watch, not Harbor yeah, Wild yeah. <laughs> Have to remind yeah, ourselves sometimes. Hard to, okay, what is this? Uh, this looks, I don't know, maybe like a sink? Sink's a good guess, but I'm going to have to say it's a sunk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we're so funny. You're so funny. <laughs> That's... It's, we're, it's the it's motto of Harbor sink. Wild Watch. It's learn, have fun, right? And this is the fun part of it. We're going to make jokes. Uh, you're a superstar, Rachel. <laughs> it's uh, making these jokes. I get it. I'll just be crabby about it. Oh, my nice gosh. This nice red rat crab here. <laughs> um, oh, look. Look, there's a fish. Oh. Right in the armpit of the yeah. sea star. Look at that. It's sort of sculpin. That's cute. Yeah. I wouldn't have noticed that. I was distracted wow. by the crab and the shrimp off to the left. There's so much life. It's amazing. Hi, crab. These big pinchers. Big pinchers on that then, big boy. Okay, that's. Oh, yeah. Egg. Look, something pink. Oh, it's a shrimp. Weird. But not that shrimp. There's another shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like hard to get a close enough look because I. This, is, this has got to be so hard to photograph. Right? When you're. You know, you've got, okay, you're trying to this. figure out, okay, how can I point at it yeah. and stay in one spot? And, and we paused that enough to be like, okay, our best guess is it's a blade shrimp, but that's knows, not man, one I've a, seen a lot of. That's kind of a cool find. There's like 50 species of shrimp around here, so. Jeez, yeah. Oh so if we have any shrimp experts out there. Uh, <laughs> Please, let us know. You're shrimply invited to drop us a line. We. Um... Another red rock crab, although this one looks to be like it's missing he's, a pincher. He's not all right. Oh. He's all left. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> We're here all night, folks. Um, got any other good sea creature jokes? Drop them in the comments. <laughs> got a kind of love sea creature jokes. They just uh, so fun. Trying to think it looks like a lot of like shell debris here. Um, rather than like just pure sand, yeah, and probably a lot of barnacle skeletons. It's a barnacle graveyard. Barnacle graveyard with the kelp crab hyenas. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. scrounging around. <laughs> totally. Do you ever wonder what these animals think of when there's like That's a bright like, light just coming at them in yeah. the night? It's got to be a weird experience for them. Of course, when I'm diving, I like to pick things up, so I'm sure they don't appreciate <laughs> that like, either. We got abducted. <laughs> there was a bright light, and then they grabbed me. <laughs> Too funny. All their friends don't believe them the next morning. Oh I didn't gosh. see anything. What are you talking about? I think your uh, observation that it's a very red dive site here is yeah. really on point. Um, and I bet if we could shrink down we could see even more. Oh yeah, look at that little slender yeah. thing. If we could shrink down enough, we could be like 
Let us tell positively you about what that kind shrimp. of shrimp this one is. Slender Very shrimp, maybe? Po pointed I don't know. Face. Ooh, and that's a Here's pretty another, fish. Yeah, a young striped sea perch. Doesn't quite have his stripes yet. Or it's just nighttime. Fish <laughs> can change colors at night. Their resting colors are a little bit different than their daytime colors. More hyenas, I mean, kelp crabs. <laughs> Munching on it's this, an important the job there. to have those opportunistic scavengers cleaning up some. Oh, another bottle. There's another bottle. I'm almost like, I wonder if they turned around. Is this the same is it, bottle? It is another Rainier. I think it's different though. This has new yeah, barnacles. Yeah, this one has barnacles on it. Right. Another little baby striped sea perch. That's cute. <laughs> like, um, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, just back away slowly. <laughs> like, Stranger no danger. <laughs> yeah. That is one thing I know. I've heard of divers that their lights will will be looking at a fish, and then a harbor seal will come <gasps> by and eat them, and just which, snatch it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you yes. would feel so bad. No, you're like, oh, buddy. Here I am, just trying to appreciate you, little fish, and then. <laughs> yeah, kelp I, crabs all I mean, over the place. We do see that a little bit with um, when we have lights in the water from shore. You know, you yeah. see the little plankton swarm, and then sometimes the fish come out and take advantage of that, so. Big old first star. Kind of funky cross leg, that leg yeah, move that. made me nervous for sea star wasting. So yeah, though, but. right. That's not a typical pose, although, you know, you never know with you sea stars. Know. That one might have just been grumpy. <laughs> Pouting. Again, me and our two dive buddies on this mission as we get a nice up close look at a bigger striped sea perch that really shows off yeah, those beautiful stripes. lines along kind of that lateral line which I is that love, look at that yellow. dorsal fin that's so pretty oh uh, yeah short in front and then long and translucent in the back and that just and a beautiful gone. blue <laughs> some more young lots of perch together they must be social hang out you know. Strength in numbers, maybe. Perch party. Another ochre star here. It's Love that purple. purple color. Yeah, that one looks nice and a healthy pose. R robust. <laughs> uh oh. It's like okay, so we did hear about this. So they found a gun, uh, which looks pretty terrifying, but it's actually just a BB gun. Wow. Um, that would be very but... <laughs> scary to find underwater. Um, You're like, yeah. uh-oh, do I call the police? Is this a crime scene? What's happened <laughs> right? here? Wild. There's a nice female kelp crab with that big, broad belly flap that holds lots of little eggs. Oh, and this one's a male. You can tell by those big pinchers. And another big male. <laughs> Those pinchers are, it's amazing that those are the okay. longest it's I of like all their walking legs. Like, like walking with the leg, yeah. Yeah, let me just walk with my pinchers. They're too heavy to lift up. I'll just crawl <laughs> along. Kind of like gorilla-esque to me. Yeah, right. I imagine if we could just shrink down and like have a magnifier, you could spend an hour or two just on one little square foot oh, totally. just looking at what's there i mean i guess you'd run out of oxygen you'd, or air you'd have to go up to the surface i like i like your style <laughs> i'll, just I'll me, join you on this just adventure give me one little square patch and, and like, magnifier we'll just teach you how to scuba dive it <laughs> and no, you can I sit really there with should. a magnifying glass here's a nice orange sea cucumber the bright orange filly bit behind that probably well that almost looks like a kelp yeah. Hmm. Um, but those are the feeding branches of that sea cucumber. And I like watching them because they'll like dip a tentacle into their mouth. It kind of looks like, like they're like off. licking their fingers. Like What it reminds me of is Winnie the Pooh eating honey. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> into the pot and oh my gosh. into the mouth. I have very vivid memories of that be and like Winnie wanting to eat honey and yeah, honey not tasting as good as I imagine it to be. Because it's like, because <laughs> it's, it's not sure. like cheese. I want it <laughs> like... I don't know. Anyways, back to these back lovely to underwater. sea creatures. Uh, oh, what's 
us just so much life and another good look at that striped sea perch and those colors are just fun California. it'd be interesting to know you know if you came back during the summer does it green up with mm, yeah. you know more green algae or you know more more of the brown kelp algae here at this location wow look at that sea Another cucumber he's so little so spiky looking side. yeah but i know he just feels like jello no i've dove this site before and i think um a little further out there's like a cobbly area just with all these salt and pepper sea cucumbers it's like they're just covering the they're sea floor everywhere. and mm. then i've also seen just like areas covered by green sea urchins so oh, wow Definitely a lot of variability depending on where you are and how far you go. And <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's what <laughs> determines whether what makes a popular dive site. You know, is what's found there. Wow, yeah. look at that fish! It's so pretty. I know. I heard there was a second buddy team, um, kind of off doing their own dive, and when they descended, they were right on top of an octopus. So, oh. so I don't, you just get lucky, <laughs> right? With octopus. Yeah. There's um, no rhyme or reason to where they are. I'm convinced it's just uh, dumb luck. So even though, yeah, you're same dive site, same day, totally different dives happening right now. This one's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little crabby about it, though. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Sorry. It sh I should mention that they can um, regenerate a little bit, so That's they have true. the ability to regrow those lost pinchers. Just like the sea star could regrow a lost leg. Pretty handy adaptations in the sea for regener regenerative capabilities. Um, I'm always impressed by the things that can regrow lost limbs. I don't know. Amazing. Yeah, crustaceans can do it. Echinoderms can do it. Um, and then there's like anemones that can just straight up split in half. And <laughs> Binary it's pretty amazing. vision, baby. Crazy. Why can't we do it? I was I was trying to think, are there any animals that have a brain that can do that? But then, mm. so I thought, oh, it's only brainless animals, but flatworms can do it. Oh. And they have a brain. Do crabs and shrimps not have a brain? No, no, no. I meant binary vision. Oh, gotcha. It's like everything I know about these creatures. More fish. It's kind of cool to see the fish like in the background and then they kind of slowly yeah. come into frame lots of these are pretty big it's kind of eerie you're like i'm waiting for a six scale to come out <laughs> that would be amazing oh man or should we say jossum huh? okay I my would. jokes aren't as funny as rachel I, <laughs> I was just thinking of what i was gonna say like what i would do if i saw a six scale shark i think i'd be so excited right you can scream into your regulator, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I know I've scream. done that snorkeling before. You can smile. Oh, wow. Look at you. Oh, look at that stripes. So pretty. Love them. Reflective. Gorgeous. Wow, we've got a big school of fish here. Yeah, you can really see. Yeah, that older, bigger sea, striped sea perch definitely shows more color and pattern than these younger ones. Still nice to see. Oh, another sea star off to the side there. More kelp, more sad kelp. Yeah. I can't wait for summer when we get some happy kelp. Lots of sunlight, lots of kelp, and then everybody who eats the kelp gets to have the benefit there. Nice red rock crab. It's big giant <laughs> plumos anemone in the distance. Like just standing tall over there. Wow. So this is a nice, uh, to see that we've seen the bright orange ones, and now here's a nice bright white one. Again, very similar. I mean, they're the same, just different colors. Nice look into its mouth. So pretty. And just so delicate. Again, I really want to poke this one. <laughs> this is one that um, has very, very small stinging cells, and so they're eating very, like, the tiniest plankton. You probably wouldn't see them catch something like a, like a crab. Um, yeah. Oh, more cucumbers. See our one of the buddies is signaling with a quick back and forth of the light that there's something cool here. I Ooh, don't what, what the what? I'd be excited if they're excited about the sugar kelp, but oh, oh here we go. Another sailfin. 
Oh, look at that cute face. <laughs> it's like a little blankie tucked into the kelp. I love that it's frozen right now. Hopefully it'll wiggle for us. No, the that back, the dorsal fin just... It just undulates yeah. the whole way along. It flutters so nicely. But it's just chilling. A cool little fish. You can always tell sculpin and their relatives because they um, they just sit on the bottom. So they they don't have a swim bladder, so when they're not actively swimming, they are heavy and sink to the bottom. So they just sort of sit there. Well, although it was interesting, the first sculpin, sail fin sculpin we saw was like, they like to hang out upside down. I yes, guess what they're seen a lot of. good at that. Another so like nice, healthy star. model star. Yeah, that is, I wonder how they like hold on and they're yeah. sinky fish. How do they Spider-Man to the That's top true. of the That's true. But they're not true sculpting, so maybe oh, they have go. special skills. That ro red rock crab. I don't <laughs> know. What's the joke for when they have all their pinchers? <laughs> another modeled star with another tiny... And that one looks Uma. maybe kind of humped up like it's feeding yeah. on something. I'm a tasty midnight snack. Okay, I don't think they're diving at midnight, but... You never know. They could be diving at 5 p.m. because it gets dark that <laughs> yeah, early. That's true. Ooh, this is weird. Yeah, What's this? It's a funky structure. That's metal, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Or I concrete? Tell. I don't know. Something. It's been reclaimed by lots of life. All the encrusting organisms. I'm surprised there wasn't like something cool popping out <laughs> of one of the holes. <laughs> you have to, have to go back on a different day. Yeah, like this is prime, like. Okay, octopus. You can crawl out now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Crawl out and get one of these fish that's paralyzed in our light. Right? <laughs> Have a shrimp snack. Something. I know, we've seen lots of red rock crabs. I know the octopus like to eat those. Totally. And lots of little nooks and crannies that are perfect for them to hide in. Mm -hmm. Octopus have this great ability to really squish their bodies through uh, anything the size of their eyeball or bigger. Um, and the eyes are squishy. It's the, their beak in the center that is hard. But everything else is flexible and stretchy and squishy and they can, even the biggest octopus can go something the size of a tennis ball. Yeah, that is wild. <laughs> a very cool adaptation. Must come in handy in habitat like this. Oh, yeah, there's a little shrimp guy. Like and dive up. <laughs> yeah, looks like they're surfacing here. I know that. I know, I recognize that. That's a Homo sapien. Oh, oh yeah. Good, good totally. call. Look, this is kind of interesting behavior for them. Normally, they don't go underwater. Right, so right, right. And the bubbles. I am a little surprised to see them here. <laughs> uh, nice slow ascent rate. <laughs> Uh, you can definitely see that change in visibility. Yeah, it's wow. It's very dramatic. So cloudy. And, like, just watch as that buddy disappears. <laughs> Bye, Nate. You're... Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> wow, um, you weren't kidding about that. Yeah. All right, and there... There's right a ferry. by the ferry boat, so... Thanks for such a good dive, buddies. Wow, that was amazing. I'm so glad um, and thankful for our volunteer divers for getting this footage for us. It's always exciting to explore somewhere new even if uh, I didn't actually get into the water yeah I think what a what a fun dive that we got to go on and uh, of course glad to answer your questions as we went along um, and just delighted to yeah explore these dive sites as part of our peer into the night program gone virtual uh, it's a really unique experience to bring you along um, on a underwater adventure so um, with that I think We'll just say tune in next month for another diving adventure. And until then, learn, learn have, have fun. fun.